down in pain. My, my, what do we have here? We damn sure the pilot washed his hands and sealed his face. Pleased to meet you. Hope you catch my name. I love you, man. But what puzzling you is the nature of my game. In 1993, I first saw This Boy's Life, and I got such a crush on this amazing actor. Um, he actually was one of my fa favorite performances in that film. Um, it starred Leo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro, and his, his performance was so touchingly powerful with so many different levels. And we have that actor here with us today, someone who I can now call my friend, Mr. Jonah Blackman. Hello. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, hey, JB. Hey, Zimzy. <laughs> uh, how are you? I am... I am well, considering these wild days. Oh. Uh, wild days in so many different regards. And as we're now shooting this right before uh, the holiday, uh, you know, and getting this new wave, if you will, of what's going on um, with the virus, it is uh, just interesting to see how we're all gonna respond to, to saving ourselves right yeah ah uh, yeah. here's here's the challenge it's here yeah yeah this is what a lot of us uh, knew that was coming at one time or the other this time of shifting and uh it's it's definitely shifting yeah i i feel like i can certainly feel everyone's exhaustion and wanting to reconnect and we were kind of this close to getting to do that, but now having the, the, the backlash of that um, is intense. It's yeah. asking for even more of our patients um, and, and just the resources that are needed. But um, how do you deal with it? I mean, how do you center yourself? Well, you know, working out is very helpful. Um, I've also been working more than I ever have during this time um, on uh, with a network that I'm a partner of called Reverie, which is the first and largest LGBT streaming platform, uh, queer TV, if you will. Um, and because home entertainment has had such a big rise, it has really um, raised the profile and uh, of of Reverie of the company. And so I, it's actually been likely the busiest time I've ever had um, uh, during these COVID days. Uh, so how I center is uh, I get to work out. <laughs> I get to uh, make sure I have my physical uh, centering. I'm eating well as well as I possibly can, yeah. making sure that I'm staying healthy in that regard. I, I, I'm a meditator. I've been meditating every day of my life since I was 18 years old. So that has been really important for me, my spiritual practice, uh, all of these elements. I feel like we're, we're really needing to, to be working all of these muscles of what self-care is and balance um, in order to really get through this. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting to hear what you're saying because I feel like I'm, I have those in my life, yet the last week or two, I've been a little heavy on being, oh, got to got to work, got to do this, got to do that, just to keep my mind busy and everything. And this little voice in my head just said, David, listen to Jonah and take your little breaths and get on your bike that you just built that you could cardio and, and, and stick your head out of the window and take some air. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a lot to balance all of this right now, and it's such new ground for everyone. And certainly, our industry is just uh, upside down, as is you know so many um, industries. And uh, it's and we have to listen to that quiet voice to really hear what is our next step because we're going day by day, um, and what really is best for me to do right now or today um, or this coming weekend. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's important to be able to, to have whatever your daily appetite is of the news and how much you're taking in there. Um, you know, 30 minutes, that's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For me. That's, that's, that's good. Um, yeah, I think we're, we're all kind of, trying to as you know it's like being in an earthquake the the right. boss is, is is moving so it's hard to have any kind of security or balance in that so you're, you're really having to to figure that out um well you know what's interesting i'm i'm hearing this now and and the you know what we're going through but i also think how powerful we are because i don't know i think it was around 2005 2006 i'm not sure exactly but i I was watching this boy's life on, on television and I'm saying, Oh, I love this movie. And again, I came across your performance and I was like, my, my, you know, I saw the whole movie and yes, I love De Niro. I love DiCaprio, but you were incredible. I was like smitten all over again. And I said, I have to see what this guy's up to. So I went on IMDb and I was going, Oh my God, this film and this, I got to get these and, and, and look at these. The next day, the very next day, um, I'm at what is it? The, the Directors Guild for the Film Society, and I'm walking in there, and I see this guy, and he looks sort of familiar, but like a little older. And I went, "That can't be him, can it?" And I go up to you and I say, "Is your name Jonah?" And you said, "Yes," <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my god!" And then we started hanging out and became friends. It was so Angela Rockwood man manifestation. It was like 24 hours. I was like, oh my God. Wow, was that then? That was in the 2000s. I think it was like right before you did uh, Big Gay Love. I mean, not Big Gay uh, um Another gay movie. Another uh, gay movie. Yes, yes, another gay movie, yes. Another gay movie. Yeah, that would have been in those, in those, in those days. Yeah, I'm so grateful for the work of that. And, you know, I look at the roles I've been getting, that I've gotten to do, um, that the, the universe has put in front of me to be able to show up for, uh, that I was appropriate for. Um, I, it, it's, it's so much of, I guess, my own philosophy about what work is and, and how things kind of culminate, and getting to, be an LGBT character in that film, kissing Leonardo DiCaprio, um, and then stepping into more work that was LGBTQ. And now it's so much a part of my mission to support uh, representation and getting to grow up in a family that was so supportive of my own uh, identity and sexuality, yeah. uh, kind of led to this, you know, where I am today and now getting to shepherd so much LGBT content. Uh, Have you always, when did you know? When did you feel like, hey, this is who I am? Or was it just you? Well, I grew up as a dancer. So I started dancing when I was four years old, um, ballet and tap. And, you know, I, somehow I was asking to do that. And I was born into a family that said, okay, sure. And, uh, and then stepped into jazz and Russian character and really um, was with the San Francisco Ballet at the age of six and then you know training intensely uh, up until working with Barishnikov when I was 14 years old and getting to train with him um, and three other boys in the country for a summer. So I was always certainly living very much what would be considered more of a queer young boy's life. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't out until I, even after um, uh, 
this boy's life. Uh, that was something that I had to, th that wasn't okay back then still. Yeah. Um, and I was still, you know, so young uh, that in my career, my agents, once I shared with them, you know, they didn't want me to do other LGBT characters. Um, yeah, I didn't really come out uh, clearly to everyone until I was around 18, 19. Uh, but I knew certainly my sexuality, my attraction, being around male bodies as a dancer, um, I, I was pretty clear that that attraction was there, but I wasn't, uh, I, I didn't have my own self permission to let that be okay mm -hmm. uh, until later on. Right. Now, and how was it? How was it working with DiCaprio and De Niro and being in that film. That was your first film, right? Yeah, that was my first film. I had been training for specifically, I mean, I had been doing, I had done like, I'd say like over 40 commercials up in the Bay Area. I'm from the Bay Area, uh, right. San Francisco originally, and I'd been training for film and television uh, since I was 11 years old. And I got that when I was uh, 16, 17, 16. Uh, so I had been training to do film and television uh, in, you know, beyond commercials for a period of time. Uh, so by the time I got that film, I was so excited and, and, and certainly um, felt ready to, to, to start really getting to share uh, the work. But yeah, I mean, it was wonderful. I mean, Robert De Niro is, you know, one of the, the, the greatest, uh, and Leo is certainly one of our greatest actors at that time. This was his first uh, real drama yeah. um, uh, role. People didn't fully know what he was going to be or who he was going to be. Um, we had a great time together. Uh, I, he became a, a friend, uh, certainly during those years, those earlier years. Um, but it was just getting to, to work and do great work with great uh, actors. I, I, I didn't know any different. I had been training to, to do that kind of work. I'd been praying to work with the best and to, 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 to be able to shine and all of that. So it wasn't something that I felt, um, I, I just was, I was happy for the opportunity. And that started, of course, my, my film career and, getting to then to do independent films and right. television and I mean you manifested I mean talk about manifestation you just you lived manifestation you didn't even know what it was you just was like okay this is what I'm gonna do boom 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 first thing you I mean dancing and then going into this huge film and you were playing playing ball that first film like I said I seriously I I have to say too that scene the piano scene is one of my favorite scenes, uh, top 10 favorite scenes, period, mm -hmm. in, in film history. I mean, I, I made, you know, when we used to have VHS cassettes, I made a tape for my class and I put, you know, Line in Winter and, you know, uh, the Funny Girl and, and, and then This Boy's Life, that scene is on there. So I would always show the class, see this, see this, not, I know you're, you see Leo, but watch, watch this guy. Yeah, that was so, and that's so funny too, because that, that specific scene, uh, I remember the Leo saying, oh, you're gonna, I, you're gonna kiss me in this scene. I was like, because that wasn't written. And I was like, what? And I was like, I don't feel like that's, what? And I didn't really, I wasn't into that. And I, I certainly, it, you know, I know there's so many Leo fans about him, but I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, attracted to Leo and certainly in that time. And um, it just, and then the director's like, yeah, you know, let's have you, uh, let's have you guys have this moment. Um, and I just was sort of resisting it, but then I was like, oh no, I get it. This is gonna be, wow, this will be something. And, uh, and yeah, it's certainly one of the most memorable moments from, wow. from my work in that film for sure it's so it's so interesting to hear it's interesting i i really was affected by that scene i think it made me you know i saw that between these two these two uh, people who were sort of had an attraction and it made me like just jump into that and feel 
like, oh, wow, could I have that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. And and what you explain there uh, about um, your hesitancy, actually, a little about doing it was in that scene, which made, created all those levels. I mean, you have so many levels anyway, but it, it's an extra added bonus. Yeah. And I wasn't, you know, out even like showing to people at that time too. And I was, I knew I was playing an effeminate character. I didn't even, you know, consciously call him queer, you yeah. know, in that time. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, <sighs> no. It was yeah, I mean, I mean, I, and then after, you know, I started looking, I, I watched Treasure Island, I watched Luster, and, and, and all these different shows that you want, and then you did your, your big film, Another Gay Movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, well, and, and that's funny, because I, I had, I had, by the time I got to Another Gay Movie, I had been doing characters, um, I've been doing all different types of characters, uh, but that came along when I was not even really out in the industry. I was certainly out in my own life. And I had read that script and I, I thought, God, I would never be a part of something like this. It's so crude. It was so, um, and I had never really done a, a flat out comedy before, right. uh, let alone like such a satire as what the, the film was so I on some level I didn't fully understand it and I was like okay I, I you know I, I I would never be a part of something like this and I <laughs> it bothered me how strongly I felt about that yeah and I knew that there was something in that for me yeah. uh, I always you know when you have a character or a project that confronts you in some way scares you or what i mean that's what we kind of step into the workforce to get to some edge or some learning something new and i knew that it really bothered me so i was like i kind of have to i have to go a little bit deeper into this and see why it bothers me why do i feel so judgmental about this and and once i got that i realized how powerful this type of comedy could be um and that then I was like, oh my God, I have to be a part of it. And then I jumped in and I was like, ended up stepping into uh, e executive producing it. And then, and then that had its life and it did very well. And then we had, we did the sequel, the sequel. as well. Yeah. yeah. And um, I've got, I've got my, uh, I got my copies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And still, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm feel very proud. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> I feel very proud of those films. They, 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 for so many people of that, even of that era, I mean, it, they, the first one came out in 2006, and I think the second one came out in 2008. Right. Um, that, that, you know, kind of blew the water, I mean, it blew people out of the water as far as what, uh, what, what a queer comedy could be. Right, um, because it was very much in it, for those who haven't seen it, it's very much in the vein of of Porky's or American Pie, American, right? Yeah, and so there was that that side of things, and and I, I still have so many people that treasure those um, those films because they were just so so outlandish and 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 so wonderfully um, on the edge. I love hearing too about how you were hesitant on this too, you know? And that's why I laughed too. It's like, uh, it was one of those laughs of really? You know, you don't expect that. You just like, okay, we're gonna go balls to the wall. But <laughs> but you were just- You do, you do. There, I mean, I we did go balls to the wall. Yes, yes. But, yeah, but that's once you, I just, I, I was, it was clear like, okay, I, this, I have to either go balls to the wall or I have to say no, because well, this is such a, um, it's so in your face. It, it was so confronting. And again, you find those those places where, okay, oh, I feel hesitant about this. I feel like I may not be either enough for this, or I might be, or, oh, I don't want to project this, or I don't know if this is, you know, yeah. if, if this is in me. Um, and then you get to kind of jump off and, and find, oh, wow, yeah, within the character, there was so much. I mean, I, for me, I, you know, I played 
it, like American Pie, there's the, the jock and the nerd and the regular guy and then the queen. Right. And I played the queen in, 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 the, in the show. And I, I had my own issues about being that and presenting that. And it, it scared me. Yeah. It scared me to, to be so, I mean, I'd already grown up oh. as a dancer. I played effeminate characters, but I'm like, I, I, this was so over the top. And I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to get stereotyped. I didn't want to, to be that because I didn't feel like that's even me and I felt like it was so uh it was just so scary yeah. to go that far out with such a queer femme character you know which is always kind of the um I think my own homophobia came out with with you know wanting to not present in that way but to be honest with you once I stepped in mm -hmm. I became so, and I became so much more comfortable with my masculinity mm because I got to blow out this femininity. Mm. And I didn't feel, after that performance and after stepping into that character, I felt so much more comfortable in my skin uh, about what my, again, what my masculinity is and what my femininity is. And before that, I would have, I was, I, I never reached those bounds. Right. Uh, and and that, that, that helped me, that, that certainly helped me. That's, I think, where stepping into characters really expand you and, 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 and give you... The yin and the, yang. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and then, what, Michael Carbonaro was in that film with you. That was one of his first films. Yeah, it was. And... Michael, um, Michael Carbonaro. Yeah, yeah. Oh, connecting to some audio. Ah, 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 you saw my name. Ah, what? <laughs> no way. <laughs> See, oh. the magician. Oh my gosh. Is it real? My brother. I, <laughs> I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen you since Halloween. Yes, exactly. And then this whole COVID time. What's this now? I, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't been following the news. I know. Michael, make it go away. I know. <laughs> I started it. It was the only way I could get a break. Oh, my God. Oh. Were you listening I, the whole time? Were you, how did you know to jump in? You know, I just got a sense inside. I don't know if you were sending out vibes, but I got this sense that I was like, I just knew the password I went in, and there I knew it. Yeah. This wasn't planned. Amen. Oh, my God. How fun. <laughs> yeah, what's up? Yeah. No, I, have, I haven't been listening. I was like in a dark waiting room. It just said, David will let you in when he's darn well good and ready. <laughs> I had to wait for the right time. What were you talking about? What's happening? Your nudity. <laughs> just, just you. Just me. We were right. just talking about you the whole time. Oh, good. <laughs> a real build up. Right? Now the interview gets to start with Michael Carbonaro, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> now we can really get into the business. Oh, my gosh. Thank you.